this is Yannick Dacasa, your Southern Regional Rep for the Graphic Artists Guild. Thank you so much for joining us for the Guild Chat Live. Hopefully you'll join us online, on Twitter, with hashtag the Guild Chat. Talk to you guys soon. Welcome everybody to the Gale Chat Live Florida. We are excited to have everybody here. We have a few guests in the audience and we have our five panelists who I will introduce in order. This is Dante Alston. This is Catalina Villegas. Nikki Dawkins. Valentina Leret. And the other Dante. The other <laughs> Dante Filia. The other Dante. Okay, the only Dante in the world. Um, so today we're going to be discussing essential business practices, standard contracts, and it's, um, business tools. So we're going to be asking the panelists a couple questions, and hopefully we'll have some questions from our audience as well. Uh, but here we go. Let's do it. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good? Great. All right, awesome. So let's kick it off with one of like the easier questions. So graphic artists are problem solvers. In your day-to-day -day work experience, how do you use graphic arts to solve problems? Like what kind of problems have you been solving up to date? Let's start with the other Dante. <laughs> Why you start with me? <laughs> Cause you would look like you were doing something bad. I wasn't doing anything bad. I was uh, <laughs> taking a moment. Um, <sighs> Graphic artists, so the real side of me, I'm an actual engineer by degree. I'm a degree in mechanical engineering from Florida and uh, got my master's in, uh, at SCAD. So I use math before I use graphic design. So it, the math adds to you know centering and, and columns and stuff like that to solve the problem of graphic design, whether I'm doing a, a layout for a book or a website, which they have lovely tools that kind of help me cheat now, but that's just basically how I, I, I do it. I mean, it's just the, the way you look at stuff, whether you editing videos, whether you are, you know, just doodling something, you still see the grid, the grid lines, you still see numbers, you still see that. So I, I do the math and graphic design. So I see Dante, was over here, the other Dante, the other other Dante was over here shaking his head, um, looked like you were agreeing. Can you expound on that? Yeah, so although I don't have an engineering degree, um, I've been doing uh, e-commerce development for a while. And what we notice is um, as the form factor changes for uh, the consumption, uh, you may, one day people are visiting your site from an iPad, the next day they're visiting from an iPhone, and then you have all these different screen sizes, but you as the designer have to figure out um, how I'm gonna present the same content across all these form factors. So designing for small screens um, is may maybe similar to what you learned in college about how to design for a small newspaper ad. So you get to reuse some of those concepts um, going forward with new technology. All okay. right, sounds legitimate. Anyone else have anything else they'd like to say? Do you mean like, um, I mean, when you said solve a problem, I guess I took it like differently. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, I know for my charity, Period Miami, graphic arts um, and graphic design is like a big way that we solve the problem of normalizing periods. People don't always want to see like super graphic period pictures. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of cartoons um, and funny graphics and things like that and artwork to kind of get the message across and make people feel not as scared because it's they look at it as art as mm -hmm. opposed to like something that we have to deal with as women. <laughs> I like that answer. I think that was like a really great approach to that question as well. Um, primarily because for, for me also as a graphic artist, I think about solving problems visually in terms of like how am I going to communicate my client's message to their audience effectively to actually get them to convert to this place where they're actually spending dollars and cents like what's going to make these visuals impactful enough to actually make them do what we need them to do which is spend the dollars or learn the information or to um, act accordingly so those are all great responses guys much appreciated my, my graphic awareness class in grad school 
Uh, graphic awareness class? Yeah, so part of my MA track, graphic awareness is whether like a political campaign or <clears throat> or a social campaign that's going to draw awareness to whatever subject you're trying to do. So I did the uh, I'm a man's man uh, campaign with oh. the old champion font and about this is about it was about voting and black people voting. So I still actually had one of the posters in my office. Okay, all right. Well, moving forward, with that when you are you utilizing your um, skills to solve problems um, how do you kind of pose those things to your clients when you're drafting things like um, contracts or proposals before you actually get to the part where they're investing in your skill set say something well I'm as an illustrator and surface pattern designer um, well that really depends you sometimes uh, the client will come to you directly with a brief and they have something really really clear in mind and they'll come to you with uh, samples or an idea of what they have in mind and it's your job as an illustrator and a pattern designer to create that visual language to transmit that information and to something that's going to work for them for their needs and for their company sometimes uh, it's trickier when you know a client does need something but they have no idea no, they don't have. And we it's, all love those. It's, exactly. And it's normal. I mean, you know, that, it's, you can't no, I'm expect, not laughing at you. I'm laughing. You at can't it. expect for everybody yeah. to, to, you know, to understand how, how that part of, you know, being visual works. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I think, the most challenging part. But it's really interesting when you're able to uh, read their message uh, because sometimes they don't even know how to transmit that information to you. Uh, and I think that's the most delicate part as an artist or as an illustrator is to kind of grasp that idea and to kind of figure out what they need before they actually tell you. So that's a big responsibility, but it's very rewarding when you're able to finally create something that they it clicks and they're like, that's exactly what I wanted. Kathleen, I appreciate the kind of passion which which you <laughs> spoke because I feel like I feel like we all kind of were able to identify with the things that you were saying and I I'm pretty sure we all like kind of like felt a prick in the back of our neck like oh pain point pain point mm -hmm. like you know one of the bigger things that we have to overcome on a daily basis yeah. with interacting with our clients yeah. um Valentina do you have anything you'd like to add yeah I mean I was just thinking about what you were saying and it's part of um obviously taking it a step further mm -hmm. but right in that moment when you click with the client it's and it's really beautiful because it's not only one opportunity but now you're opening other doors for the client to be like, oh, so I didn't even know we could do this. So yeah. now we can do that. And that's even a great opportunity for you as a business owner, as a designer, as an artist, to actually propose something, like create another need, create another opportunity, another profitable um, project for you. Yep. So it, it does help a lot. And it really is like the most important part of it. Yep. So with again with those thoughts and understand those things have to be conveyed to your client and you both have to agree on something before you move forward and kind of understand what like the project scope is how do those things translate when it's time to actually like lock the project in are you guys including these things in contracts are you guys doing contracts are you just putting footnotes in your invoices like how are you moving forward once you've had the conversation about what they would like to do i do contracts yeah mm -hmm. i do statements whatever item I am, that I'm working on. So if it's like a, if it's a written piece of content and then they also need like a Pinterest graphic and then they want a video for an IG, like I'll break all of those down and exactly detail what it is. Um, and then of course include things like revisions and timelines and acts of God, I like to call it, because it does happen. I'm a mom, so you know, if something happens, I, I don't want to put my client in jeopardy, so I do let them know, you know, these are the things that might happen due to my situation that might prevent your work from getting done on time. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think it's doing the contract is one of the most essential things. Because being an artist, you usually neglect that part of your business. You're you're never thinking about that because, like I said, as an artist, your most like your most important factor is being able to communicate what you like or express your art, whether it is your graphic design or an artist per se. Um, so. Having a contract is—it's like playing a game. Like, 
the only way they're gonna play the right way or in a functional or effectively way uh, is having the rules of the game. So once you have a contract, it's way easier to just play around with the client or with the project or it just makes things smoothly. So everybody knows what's going on yeah. and um, like, yeah, so exactly. nobody exactly. gets any surprises and you protect yourself and the client, which is like extremely important. As mostly, even you probably feel it a little bit more because you're an illustrator, mm -hmm. so it needs to be stated there. So yeah. Mostly, like rights stuff or licensing or yeah. copywriting, like all of that needs to be stated from the beginning. Yeah. So, I have a feeling that I know the answer to this question, and everyone's gonna get, but I'm just like gonna go down the line. Um, and the question I'm gonna give everyone the ability to say yes or no are contracts important? Yes, absolutely. Course. Okay, I know we kind of just stated it, but I feel like I want Dante number one ha, 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 to tell us again why contracts are important. Because I feel like as artists, like you said, we tend to neglect that portion of the business. Like, oh no, you know what? I'm just doing this. It's going to take me an hour. It's not a big deal. No, we don't want to deal with it. Yeah. It's just tedious. Like, really? try to write, write it down and everything. It's just it's so annoying. I, like I remember things. being that person who neglected um, <laughs> writing up contracts. And I remember why. It was because I was thinking, if this is a $500 project, what's you know, the if the, what's, what's the worst that can happen? And, and also, if the worst does come to pass, it's going to cost more to hire a lawyer and try to recover what I'm owed yep. than the value of the entire uh, project to begin with. But here's why you do it anyway. <laughs> because really the, the most important thing is that um, everyone understands what the expectations are. What you, the, the worst thing is you, you get you know, an invoice, you get it paid, and then the client calls you back like, hey, can you do one more thing or can you, and that, that cycle will just never stop if you haven't written out exactly what your deliver, deliverables should be. Um, and then you may think, oh, I can do this work um, without a contract because it's such a small job, but um, that when, if, if they, they can actually sue you if, if you um, miss a deadline or if you deliver something that they say is not um, what they asked for, because they could say you caused them damages to their company um, because they couldn't get their product launched on time or whatever. So now you, you or your business can be liable for damages because you didn't have a contract to begin with. So it's always good to have one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, I appreciate that because I'm not gonna lie, I'm also an example of live and learn. I've, I've had my own shares of trials and tribulations, but thankfully now I have the graphic artist skills and people like you to teach me better. Um, get a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to ask, when do you get a lawyer? I was about to say the same thing. Don't you just tap you one of your lawyer it, for it? Like, yeah, hey, look this over from. Because for me, I like words. I come from, a, I mean, I did my master's in entertainment business at Full Sail, so contracts was a huge part of what we did. And I work with artists like Camille, who I'm always like, do your contracts, do your contracts. So it's not like a problem for me, but I tell people that aren't good with contracts, just hire someone to do it for you. Because mm -hmm. you're going to waste time on something that's not your skill set, and you're, gonna, you're better off putting your energy into the project than just hire someone. Give them a percentage of whatever the, the gig is and do the contract. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of free ones out there, too, that you can look at that are pretty general and work well, and you can adjust. So, and then, okay, oh. one more quick mm -hmm. Also, too, when you send your estimates out, it's like just the general legal language you can add to kind of deem it as a contract. So, for us, you know, clients that are under a certain threshold of value, our estimates are our contracts. But, you know, once it, once it exceeds that threshold, I have to actually get a legal sheet of paper, we have to sign it, and all this other stuff. So, yeah, most estimates you can just add that as footnotes or line mm -hmm. item into the estimates, whatever system you use. I'm an avid QuickBook user now. Been doing it for the last being a force fourteen years old. Hashtag so. sponsor plug. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I need them to hook us up for that thing. But it's worth it though. The the the, the, the monthly service fee for that particular apparatus is worth it. But so um, um a little bit of a rewind. Um I guess I, initially I was going to say, when should you call a lawyer, right? Um, but I guess before I even get to the part where I say, when should you call a lawyer, is are there 
any resources that you guys can recommend because I know someone just said you know there are resources out there yes. are there any resources that you guys can recommend for artists um, to get contracts that will help them mm -hmm. expedite this whole process and, and get rid of some of the work that they don't like doing like the guild, oh, right? Definitely. Yeah, the definitely. Guild. Well, I'll say, at least for uh, as an illustrator, um, I've only been illustrating since 2015. And for me, like the first thing automatically when I started uh, like discovering the world of illustration, okay, if I'm going to start working with people, how? Like, how does it work? I need, you know, that business or legal, you know, uh, thing in, in the middle. I need to figure that out. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of a, a community online of illustrators. And one of the, the books I was always uh, uh, suggested was a graphic artist guild uh, handbook. And that's honestly, that's been my Bible. That's been my lifesaver. And I always use that book, whether it's to figure out a fee, because it's super detailed. Yeah. You know, like even if you're working wallpaper, if you're working fabric, if you're working uh, print, it's, it's a really, really handy resource when you don't have uh, the necessity uh, to, all, you know, you don't always need to hire a lawyer. I mean, it, you know, it's nice to have somebody do something for you, but I also think it's important as artists to educate ourselves and educate our clients. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we get super lucky, like I'll get clients who license art, uh, like, year-round, so they naturally, like, they come to me with, with a contract. But I might, I have clients and I've done amazing projects with them and they have, have no idea, like, out of, you know, work with a contract. So I'm the one that ends up educating the client. And you know what? It's okay. I think it's part of our responsibilities as artists to, you know, to teach them and to share that information with them. So the the couple of the last pages in the handbook are all client um, contracts, and they're just sample pages. And I've actually like one one of the contracts that was really really helpful. Uh, was when uh, C's and, and this is letter. Oh, girl. Yeah. I had some people take my artwork and they were using okay, it, you know, without it. my consent. And it's, you know, it's, and they obviously, they're, they're not mean skirted. They just didn't really understand how it worked. You know, people think just because something is online, you know, that they can automatically grab it and use it. So I, you know, using, I remember like I had a, you know, good experience using that specific uh, form inside the, the handbook. I, I definitely use my share of that cease and desist letter as well. So yeah, <laughs> shout out to that one. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess rewind a little bit. I like to rewind apparently. Yes. So sure, let me live my life, okay? <laughs> so um, my basic rule of thumb, I mean, outside of like utilizing um, the varying contracts that I already have access to is I call lawyers when lawyers call me. Like if I have a client and their lawyer drafted a contract and sent it to me, I am not reviewing that contract. I call a lawyer. When do you guys call lawyers? The same, I guess. Luckily, uh, yeah. we have one on staff. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, this is, like let, me, let me back up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, luckily, we, I mean, we, have, we have, no, because my business partner is married to one, so she, oh, she helps. reviews a lot. Of, <laughs> she, she helps us out a lot. With, she gives us the basic language because we need to exceed past that, then we'll go and that our other lawyer uh, colleagues, but then I've done hundreds of lawyer websites. I have a plethora of what you call them, but also too, sometimes it doesn't take all that if the understanding and the understanding of the scope of the project initially is already, you know, we've, we've, we've decided on this and you got it in black and white. That's why emails are important. Uh, what you say on the phone, and what's and what's written in black and white mm -hmm. are two different things. Yep. So oftentimes, what I tell a lot of people, and we even do it ourselves. So, say that me and other Dante had a conversation about a project X, Y, and Z. I'll follow up email per our conversation. Yep. Da, 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 da. Like today, I had a client who asked me for a file, and I literally screenshot because I kept the file that I sent her. I, I sent her a big zip file. I branded a county up in North Florida kept the zip file as is because I, I had everything broken down to folders, subfolders, it was EPS files, PDF files, X, Y, and Z. Broke it down. I literally took a screenshot of the file. Say, if your files do not look like this, let me know because you clearly are not looking in the right spots for the file that I know for a fact I sent you. So it's just it's simple stuff like that and then that'll, that'll, that'll decrease the back and forth 
that a decrease. Oh, make this last correction. No, it's a new invoice. Amen. Um, so and it, 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 it helps also mitigate your client's expectations because if you have to get to that point when you get past the contract or the estimate <laughs> that you have to seek uh, legal advice and all this other stuff, is because there was some lost, there was some stuff lost in translation before you even got to that point. Mm -hmm. A lot, like I said, a lot of stuff can be mi mitigated with emails. I went back a year in emails to prove my point. So that's just, just some helpful free. That's some free ninety nine advice I never got because you understand I've been doing this since I was eighteen. I'm forty one now. It's been a while. Been a while. Just a little bit, a little bit of time. <laughs> So, oh, 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 cough, cough. So, all right, we understand we got to have our contracts down. We understand what designers do. We understand the kinds of problems that they're solving. Um, outside of trading, and this is a thing that I kind of, I love, hate not to do. Um, outside of trading time for money, what are some ways that graphic artists in general can make dollars and cents that doesn't, that doesn't equate to them literally trading their time for money. Everyone's looking at me strange. Should I ask this question like another way? I'm thinking royalties. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the first that. thing that came to yeah. mind. Okay, so um, licensing work. Yeah, you well, should talk about when, that. When you we? license artwork for like an illustration, <laughs> you can license a specific, just let's say one piece that can be uh, applied to diverse products and you get a small amount of the sales of each product each time a product is sold, for instance. So it's just money that you do the work once, but you license it, so regardless of the amount of, uh, um, of products or items that are sold, you still keep on getting money for each piece um, that's being sold. So, yeah. ooh, go ahead, Dante. I'd say the only other way to diversify is expand it outside of the graphic design scope. I mean, awesome. The graphics, well, Online courses. Courses, yeah, mm -hmm. good. Reselling your skills so other people, cool. you only have to make the content once mm -hmm. and you just sell it after that. Yep. And I've set those up for some clients before too, yeah. my classes. You could also make the the templates um, if, you, if you make some oh, yeah. mm -hmm. those are good. templates, re yeah. resell the templates. And your um, pictures yeah. on the stock website. And I think um, there are some like graffiti artists um, who are doing graphic arts, but um, if you have like a tag or a tagline, so for example, 50 cents sold, to get the strap um, tagline to Viacom. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna merchandise that. But if you're, if you're a graphic designer and you already have your own tag, um, you could obviously merchandise your tag and, and get more royalties that way. Mm -hmm. any, any, I feel like I interrupted someone. No? <laughs> all right, all right, so I like that. Those were all really great. Um, I feel like those are like really primary examples. I feel like people sometimes they don't really think outside like the parameter. Like they literally feel like, oh, I have no work right now. I'm in a really bad situation versus trying to figure out like how to utilize their skill set to, to actually create a new source of revenue for themselves. Right. Because we really we have, we're pretty talented people. Like we, we literally can figure out like how to turn our talent into like dollars and cents outside of actually working with a client directly. Um, personal opinion, but everybody I seems agree. to agree with me today. Mm -hmm. For once. For once. Oh. It's weird. So, with that being said, how do you gauge your price points outside of talking about your hourly rate or your project rate um, for those other avenues? Like, how are you defining what the dollar amount is associated with those things? And we're going to start with Dante, other Dante. Um, that's a hard question. That's a hard question because I mostly focus in on um, digital and web. So a, a lot of the things that we end up doing end up being um, open open source, or uh, maybe you start with a theme and you and you build on top of it. So as those rights holders get um, that that rights holders list gets expanded. Um, it can be hard to try and say, okay, I own this particular part of the project, especially if you've taken anything from, from any other source that was open source. Um, so in my case, oftentimes I do end up having to focus in on selling that actual time because I can't resell open source um, software or, or materials. Um, but, but I'm sure if you're an illustrator, it's probably a little bit different. 
Well, I guess it depends. Uh, like if, if, it, if it's a project that's maybe unusual or new and you and you know you can't really figure out the like the fee or how to charge for that project, uh, like the bait, just ask. I mean, there's good resources. There's colleagues. There's uh, for example, illustration agents that you can actually set up a, a Skype fee for a very minimal, uh, a Skype uh, call for a minimal fee, and you can ask them, you know, ask somebody who knows more than you. Like, don't be afraid of asking. I think, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a hard question for me, too, because I do, I think I do most of it. My graphic stuff is more by time and hour. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm bundling it in with like influencer work, then it's a little bit different. Because if it's something that they ask me, because a lot of times what happens is I'll get a brand and they'll be like, can you create something with our brand that caters to your audience? And if they want me to share it with the audience on like a newsletter or other platform, then that will add to my cost, like as a flat fee. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's by trying to factor in how much time it's going to take me to make this video for you or to make this graphic for you or whatever I have to do. So does anyone um, factor in like delivering value versus um, just factoring in time? I mean, you always have to take into account not only the time that it takes you to actually work on the project, but the time that you spend on phone calls with the client, on meetings with the client. Um, if you have to drive somewhere, how long it took you to drive there uh, for the meeting, like it's, it's a little bit more than that. So you always, when you're doing like your estimate, you should always kind of add some cushion there, um, like a couple of just extra hours, not even that many. But you always need to take into consideration like all those little things that you usually don't think because it's like oh no I didn't I'm not in the computer sitting like actually working on it um, so we usually forget about them but we should always always take them into account. So I feel like Dante wants to say something. Look, I got four words okay. that works every time, and it would scare the bejesus out of some people. What is your budget? <laughs> Period. What is your budget? I've had a client, true story, I've had a client come to me for work on a couple different occasions. I did her realtor uh, logo back in 2010, 2011. And she came to me with some other stuff. I, I asked her everything. I sat on the phone with her for 30 minutes, whatever, X, Y, and Z. Got all that. She said, I want to stay around this number. I sent her an estimate. That number. Didn't hear from her. Text her, said, hey, did you get an estimate? Then we decided to go another way because it came down a number. Well, you told me your budget. I kept it within your budget. So that, that, people, and this thing that kills me about some clients, like you know what you're going to invest into a project. If you got a thousand dollars, boom, say, I got a thousand dollars and let's stick with that. What services can you provide for that value? Um, you got ten thousand, and then so forth and so on. If you got fifty, then go to five. But um, <laughs> look, I'm just keep hashtag it we do not co-sign five. I don't co-sign five right now because I literally I had a client for it honestly. So I had a client just recently. She couldn't just she couldn't articulate what she wanted. She mm -hmm. went to five and literally got some trash. I had to clean it up. I had to redo it proportionally. Because clearly, whoever did that stuff on Fiverr don't know how to hit the shift button, <laughs> the circle, the actual circle. But you know, neither here nor there. Doesn't that come into default settings now? Uh, no, it's not. Just all you gotta do is hold on. Photoshop. Yes. Oh, oh Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop. Okay. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. on, on, on Illustrator, it's a little, a little yeah. shift key and just <laughs> open. So uh, you know, I said. So again, we so we're to the point. Like, what's your budget? And then I provide the services based on. Your budget. I will give you what your budget can allow for, because you're gonna go to Joe. We, I call him cousin it. You know, you go to your cousin it, who just got a, a copy of Photoshop and Illustrator. They swear to God, they the they the they the shit dot com when it comes to graphic design. Y'all do that. They don't turn around your work X Y and Z. Guess what? You come. Uh, you, then you, then you get the sob story. I'm like, guess what? My number just went up. You gonna pay me or not? And, that's, and I treat them like that every time. And I'm, I'm not ashamed. So that's what's your budget? I don't have to. I don't have to look. You put like I, a date on your quote. That's what I do. I do too. Expires. Oh, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Mine's usually yeah. national ninety days. Yeah, ninety days. Ninety days. Ninety days is long. Ninety days. Ninety days is long. I have two weeks. Because, 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 yeah. because, yeah. because yeah. I know they're not gonna come back in ninety days. 
I guess the only reason why, like for me, 90 days is long is because if you come back to me in 90 days, Outside of like pricing it based on value, I also price based on availability and how quickly yes. you need things. Yes. And if you need it by tomorrow or you need it by oh, September twenty fifth, that's, that's an expedition test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you pull, you pull up on me on September first right. oh, when we spoke about this in May. Yes, it's, that you're happens a lot. I can't help you. You're gonna get a text because you came. I'm like that was like two months ago. Yeah, no, my pipeline is now full. Now. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. A relatively frustrating thing. So don't be afraid to ask that question. Whoever's listening, don't be afraid to ask yeah. that question. That's a true, honest question. What's your budget? Because, you know, she's a fire-ass illustrator. I don't expect her stuff to start at a low price point. Right. Right. Same thing with Dante and his e-commerce sites. I mean, I, I do them too, so I know how much they cost. Mm-hmm. And make sure they can give you, like, a number. Because I feel like, oh, we don't know yet. We just want to see. And then when you, you throw a number out to them, they get, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you, are you clutching my pearls? Yeah. You gave me such so a high like, number. Give me a number right. You knew what you wanted to invest. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know what? And sometimes it's okay to say no. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. No. Amen. Amen. So get a hello, this is half <laughs> 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 I'm talking about. This you know, okay some, sometimes it just it's okay to say no. Yeah, and I I can it's totally better. co-sign that one. Sometimes not every client is for every design and vice versa. No. No. And there's nothing more frustrating than saying yes to a project. And then doing it and being frustrated through it the whole, like you're not producing your best work. Yep. Um, so that being said, I say that a lot. Um, when you guys are searching for new clients, how, how, what ways do you go about doing that to make sure you're getting the kinds of clients that you want to work with? I'm going to start with Nikki. Um, for me, um, I like going to events. I'm an in-person type of person and I find a lot of clients that way um, and so I'll go I do feminine health stuff mostly mother mompreneur stuff so I'll go to those type of conferences and events and workshops that I see around town and that's usually where I'll pick up clients and then I get a lot of referrals I don't usually have to do a lot of advertising anymore now um, it's kind of just like a word of mouth thing because I've been doing it for a while um, that's I, pretty much it. I want to co-sign that one referrals are the best mm-hmm. Like, there was a time in my life where I used to send out like these email newsletters and like send them out regularly. Now it's just kind of almost, it fe- now from a design perspective, it almost feels like I'm spending too much on my time, too much of my time doing that if I do it because I could be spending my time actually engaging clients who are already ready to spend the dollars and cents right. because they heard about me from someone who already worked with me. Oh, she's so easy to work with and she'll da 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 and she'll da da. And so they already have like these. Um, expectations that are actually reflective of like the actual person. Um, Dante. Um, you gotta think about what type of projects you wanna work on and then maybe go to an event for that industry. Um, so recently um, we, we've taken on like a, a national or an international uh, furniture manufacturer and you know as part of their you know website maintenance plan um, part of that was updating it with all the trade shows they were going to be at. So automatically right there, we had as an agency a list of all the trade shows. So if we wanted to get more clients in that field, we could either send out some promotional material to that field or show up in person and, and shake some hands. Um, and it's, if you can show up, it's always best to show up in person because that'll convert way faster than an email or a cold call. Um, a referral is great too, but we don't always get those if, you don't, uh, already, if you're not already connected in that sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. Um, Google and social media. Listen, the power that you hold in your fingertips with a phone is amazing. This is the world right there, so I don't get why people complain that they can't find work or they're not finding clients. Yeah, because they're watching Netflix or they're watching <laughs> YouTube or, you know, or they're, they're, wasting, they're, they're wasting time on their phone when you should be, instead of complaining, doing something to, to work for yourself. So uh, the way I, I work from home, and I work with clients, uh, I live in Colombia right now in South America, and I don't work with any Colombian clients. I work with American clients and European clients, and I found every single client online. I've either found them or, or they've found me. So um, sometimes it is word of mouth, networking is super important, but sometimes you don't have the access to you know being there physically with other people, and when you don't, it's just a matter of making a list of, let's say I want to work, I want to do uh, fabric uh, fabric collection. So I make a list of 
I'm not saying like 10, make a list of like 300, 400, 500 companies that make fabric, reach out to them, email them, uh, send them your portfolio, find out who the art director is. So it's just when you start reaching out to that, you know, out of 100 people, one or two might say yes, you know, not everybody's going to reply, some people don't care, but you know, if the more you insist, the more people are going to get back to you. That's the way that I've uh, landed my illustration jobs. And for instance, I got uh, my work published and we, and, um, we transfer. Uh, like about four years ago when I first started illustrating back in 2015 and the way that happened was that um, I was like okay I know uh, we transfer is doing like a rotating like a mural thing on their website so I googled and I found uh, one of the curators blogs and I emailed him and uh, I you know I said hey I know you guys are doing this like, who can I talk to he's like that's me. Yeah, I love your work. And, and he, he, you know, they put my work up on, we transferred for a couple of months and that got me, uh, got me a lot of leads. So it's just a matter of asking or, you know, like same thing, like we're here and it's, you know, once you start, when, once, when you meet somebody, ask them, what, you know, hey, what do you do? And this is what I do. So it's just a matter of being open and reaching out to people, not expecting that just because you make art and you're a wonderful artist and you do this, that people are automatically, they're gonna find they're, yeah, they're going to find you because it, it doesn't happen that way follow-up is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think it's very important when you mention about the whole social media aspect of it, um, because some people do complain a lot about, oh, but I'm not getting what I want, yeah. but at the same time, they're not really focusing their social media channels to attract those clients that they yeah. actually want. That's right. So it's like, it's it's a little bit of everything, but... And you know why they're complaining? Because they're not being social on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so they're being selfish. So they're just putting out con like their content yeah. or their thing. They're just sitting yeah. there. I don't even think about their actual uploading there because sometimes yeah. you would see the most random <laughs> thing. Like if, if you have a business account and you want to push in your business, like it, you cannot just start adding like personal stuff, right. like put up your cat or your dog. Or well, or you, you could, or you could, 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 you just posting for posting is, yeah. is not help okay. either. So. I mean, because like um, I, I normally recommend that people do, especially when um, you're more of an independent contractor or more of an individual than um, like a business entity, mm -hmm. um, like when you are the artist or when you are the designer or when you're the creative, I normally um, encourage people to like incorporate aspects of themselves so people can really yeah. kind of right. like, understand the, the personality that they're, are, they're, yeah. they're working right. with. And, and sometimes people, um, are a bit more responsive to that because they're like, oh, she likes cats. That's really yeah, random, yeah, but yeah. she likes cats. I like cat. I like cats too. She'll understand if my cat's meowing in the background while we have a meeting. I don't know, but oh, no, I do. I do get what you're saying, and I do think that yes, it is important to humanize your account, your brand. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to do it in an intelligent and smart way. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just, mm -hmm. like I said, randomly yeah. throwing stuff out there. I think that's so specific just to what you do, because yeah. it just depends on if you're a personality type business brand or if you're more like, you know, where you just have like a certain form that you follow. I think it just depends on what you got going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and going back to the whole being social on social media, like if people message you, answer. Like I'm amazed when I look at accounts that they, they don't even have that many followers and they people leave like nice meaningful messages or questions and people don't take the time to answer. Like you're automatically like blocking yourself from interacting or possibly getting a job or meeting somebody important. You know, it's it's using the, the, the platforms the way that they were designed that they're supposed to be used. So it's just, it's again, it's a selfish thing. You can't be selfish with this. It's all about a network. Don't think you're too cool to respond on exactly. the Exactly. So you just have to, to be me. careful with social media because it's also very easy to waste time on social media. Oh yeah. And because it's such a wide audience, sometimes you are going to attract people that are not going to spend with you and just want to be there for like the cloud of fame and just want to follow your page. And you have I'll to have be, examples kind of, have of to that. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know for me sometimes I, I do get things and people will ask me stuff in my DMs and I'm like, I charge a consultation fee for these kind of questions. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I have to come up with a way like, okay, here's a link to my consultation page. If you want more answers, go here. Because mm -hmm. you will like get a lot. You have to filter yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. And like I said, Sometimes you don't have to waste the time. You're scrolling too much. Maybe you're engaging with people that you don't need to be engaging with. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be smart about it. I like to set like a time frame for my social media. Mm -hmm. And once I hit that, I'm kind of like, okay, let's mm -hmm. like get over this. Okay. Yeah. I um, I feel like social media is probably um, 
a good segue into figuring out ways that you could grow as a designer, like outside of like growing your business base and your client base, like how do you grow as a creative, as a graphic artist, as a web developer, as you know, like how, what are, what are some ways that you take time to like grow personally? I try to do one thing every day that makes it better. Sometimes it's like reading a chapter of a book or sometimes it may be like going and doing like figure drawing classes because I, outside of enjoying that, like I feel like it helps to sharpen up my skill set. So um, Nikki, we're gonna start with Nikki. What do you, what do, you do? Um, I think that I do those, those same things. I'll, I'll read something, um, I'll do like an online workshop, I love that, or um, going to an event that will better what I'm doing or connect me with people that I think I want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't know if you want to relate this back to social media, but part of my social media thing too is every week I'm like, I'm gonna reach out to three people in my industry that I wanna collaborate with. Um, and I use social media that way, and I found that it not only <coughs> expands my audience, um, but it also, you know, forces me to like reach out to somebody new that maybe is not in my city or that's further away from me, that's doing the same thing as me, you know, and you can kind of feed off each other's audiences. So that's been helpful for me. Mm -hmm. well, okay. I mean, I think it comes back to the same topic: research and learn. Like always, try to keep researching. Always try to learn new things, whether mm -hmm. through social media, you can knowledge, you can Google all sorts of courses and. Um, just yeah. like finding new books and like, there's so 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 many resources out there um, you just need to keep pushing it like every day you try to learn something try to keep it going keep researching this is a business and a field where well an industry where constantly evolving yeah it's so, it, it moves so fast it evolves so fast that you need like it's it's a prerequisite like you you cannot run away from it you need to be constantly trying to learn something try to see what the new trends are, like what, what's out there, because if not, you're just gonna fall behind, and it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna affect your business in a big time. So it just comes back to researching and keep learning, never okay. stop learning. I normally like share the books that I'm reading on like whatever platform, and this is just like a random share. There's nothing more frustrating for me than when someone then shoots me a DM and says, where can I find this book? If you don't Google, mm -hmm. the whole title of the book is there with the name of the person. <laughs> I just felt like I needed to share that with you guys. Yeah, get off the no, chat. Yeah, 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 free now. Free now, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. This is bro right off the top. Right? I was, not it. Uh, well, personal projects always uh, keep me inspired to learn. So if you, uh, if there is sort of a, an area you want to brush up in, um, you build a personal project around it. Um, I remember when, prior to Apple Pay being integrated with WooCommerce, I was really um, intrigued by the idea that I could build something and someone could just touch their thumb and it would process the payment. But I didn't have any clients that had that need or that wanted to even spend that money. So I was like, well, I'll just set up a little t-shirt website and see if I could figure it out myself in my spare time. Um, so that's a, a good way to um, grow your, your knowledge um, without necessarily having to wait for a project that, that demands you to learn um, that particular skill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I guess, you know, it's, it's all about learning. So one of the things that I use a lot is Skillshare. I don't know if you guys are familiar yeah. with that platform. Um, there's tons of short courses that, you know, it's, they're just really good to brush up, like, on your skills. Uh, and then, you know, side projects, just like Dante saying, like, in my case, as an illustrator, you know, I do illustration, but music is my side thing. So, uh, you know, it might not be the same exact, like, thing, like, in terms of, you know, like, all the details, but it's still a creative, you know, endeavor. So, you're solving problems in one way or another, like, in music that it could actually be applied to something that you're doing at work and it just keeps your mind you know fresh and, and it's nice to do something different as well yeah sometimes I have to take a break from the computer yeah and reading definitely like reading and do something like like working out or exercising or walking like you know for like us like you know who probably like a, you know using screens like too many hours like in one day it's nice to like go outside and like see like the sky and the trees and <laughs> it, sometimes, sometimes you'll be sitting in front of the computer so long and you don't realize that like I don't, time has passed yeah. and so you somehow manage to open a door 
you look out there and you're like, oh, it's it's, it's dark. dark. Yeah. It's, dark. Yeah. It's, it's, it's dark. That's awkward. I make myself get up, so <laughs> I fold clothes in between projects. <laughs> okay. That's pretty much an awesome thing. But just to just to <laughs> add, on. no, seriously, I do fold clothes between projects. It works. Yes, yeah, uh, You get I your house clean it. and you fold mm -hmm. clothes. Um, <laughs> but also too, um, how I got into uh, video editing and stuff like that. True story. Uh, he was about to hire this young man, 24 years old, stayed with his mama, all this good stuff. He was pretty swift in the editing process. He said me to me and my business partner, oh, we were too aggressive. And me and my business partner looked at each other funny, like, too aggressive? Dude, you editing two hours of footage. That's it. So I had I learned editing mm -hmm. trial by fire. Yeah. I sat in front of a computer and figured it the f out. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm down to editing two hours in 30 minutes. I got new equipment to shorten my time up even further. Um, stuff like that, or just, you know, I cook the way I design. So the way I look at colors, the way I look at seasonings and flavorings and, 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 or, and herbs, I look at it the same way. If I know this red tastes like this, paprika tastes this way. <laughs> so that's another thing you do. You gotta find those little creative things to keep your your creative edge because it can be stagnant and, and, and you know all right. this and that third and you're looking homogenized like you've been using Helvetica new all your life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like I swear to God, somebody somebody used Franklin Gothic in a design of damn near pure. But anyway, I studied typing in grad school, so just excuse me, I can ride them off all day. But uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, so that's how you keep your creative edge. Find those things that are still creative. Whether you're going to pull your camera out, going to take a few photos, or, or pulling your camera out, going to shoot some video, or pottery, or, or painting, going to get a tattoo, whatever, that's your creative outlet. Mm -hmm. It helps because right. you never know. It's something you may see on the wall. Cause like I, because like like everybody love Pinterest. I have my Pinterest of design inspiration sites. Sorry, no. I, ha I hate Pinterest too. No, I'm good. I don't do Pinterest. <laughs> but I have my I have my sites I go to to see. Oh, that was really fantastic. Something they did on a beer label. I like stumble upon. Mm -hmm. Oh well, transitioning to that. All right, this is going to be our last question of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. Turn up. So, think deep, reach deep, and share. What is one tool that you feel like every Graphic artists should have one tool. One tool. If you say a computer, I'm, I'm gonna kick you guys out. Just one tool, right? That you feel like without it, like your day just doesn't doesn't work very well. I I like Toggle because Toggle helps me to um, basically manage my time, um, keep me accountable, um, kind of keep me at pace when it comes to what I'm working on, so I'm not over here working, you know, 20 hours on a project that you're only spending two hours on based on like what's allowed in the budget. Um, so yeah, toggle is my thing. Hashtag sponsor at any time. Okay. <laughs> no, time tracking is very, very important. Um, we use a platform called Monday.com. I like so Monday. Monday. I like Monday. Why they gotta charge? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, it, but it, it works really yeah, well. It works. And it's works. easy. Pretty. And it's like, I love yeah. it. It's love the entire platform. Yeah, Monday, Monday is great for us. We have all our projects in there. Um, but you know, it, it it is a paid product. So, um, but, but one of the things we started to notice um, when we were using Monday and tracking time in Monday is that. Um, Okay, so if, if you're, let's say you're a graphic designer and your rate is $20 an hour, right? Um, which is low, right? So your, your objective- we, we, we knew you were just shooting a random number. Right, yeah. so if you are just starting and that's your rate, your objective is to get that rate as high as your clients can bear for the value that you're providing, right? So your, your default way of achieving that might be to say, okay, um, the rate is twenty dollars an hour, and we build down in increments of an half an hour. So if you work an hour in six minutes, that invoice is going to go out as an hour and a half, right? Because your rate is only twenty dollars an hour, um, it's going to be a thirty dollar invoice, right? What we found is with Monday allowing us to, or any really any time tracking tool, 
Um, if you build down to very specific increments, you can actually increase your hourly rate and the client won't react so abruptly to it. So if you increase your hourly rate to $30 an hour um, and you tell the client, hey, the rate is $30 an hour, however, we're gonna build down to one-tenth of an hour, when they see, okay, he billed for one hour and six minutes, it's gonna be a $33 invoice instead of a $30 invoice, but the client is also gonna be like, okay, he respects my money because he's billing me for just six minutes instead of rounding up to a, a half hour. Um, so time tracking is very important. I have a really good one. It's a paper notebook. Oh, I love it. Listen, you can make lists. You can uh, use it to bullet journal. You can sketch. You can jot down your ideas. Listen, it's better than anything else. That's what I love. Okay, Just paper journal. Yeah. I like paper journal. Journal person too. Um, I think a tool that's probably the most valuable for me, um, uh, I, it's called um, FreshBooks, I'm going to go with this, because mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a time tracker, it also does pretty much all of my revenue streams, because I have different revenue streams for my business, um, it's great for tax time, pulls out my expenses, connects to my bank account, it's really, it's, I pay for it, but it's very affordable, mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend that they do have a free trial, so I'll try it out, so if you like <laughs> it guys. I'm horrible with free trials. Like yeah. n normally, while it's free, I never use it, like and then it hits my account, and I'm like, oh, you gotta sign up, and you know you're gonna use it. It's like gym membership. What was it? Um, actually, I use Monday too. I tried a couple of others. Um, I remember trying Asana, and I hated it. I it don't like Asana. Asana. I yeah. do some sex. I hated it big time. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time <laughs> where I had to use this thing called Podio. I love I like hate. Podio. I love hate Podio yes. only because it has it has so many parameters and you really can put things in. But like that's like the contract. I don't want to have to do all that. I just so just good. tell me what just tell me where to put yeah. stuff. I don't I don't want to build this. I, I don't want to have to use my designer brain to now figure this out too. It's supposed to be like right about that. not you so have hard. to like design it out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, yeah I, mean, I don't want to build UI UX for myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So yeah, Monday. All right. <laughs> I got a good one. It's not tangible. It's not on the computer. It's called driving ambition. Works <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's the best tool you ever have. Driving ambition. Driving ambition. Because if you don't have it, you can take your ass back to work. Go to a regular nine to five. Clock in, clock out. Because if you don't have it, especially as a graphic designer, because you got to think, uh, you know, people are. We talk about me and my business partners talk about this all the time because I have I have business partners with content writers and, and marketing and 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 me and my business partner my my, my business partner for Medium Four we have an uh, not we have a, we have to always explain ourselves because we are a full service design and marketing agency and most people when they think full service marketing and design agency that they they pass out certain tasks to subs no. We do it all, like literally. You need some video shot, you're gonna see Mike and Dante. You need a website done, most likely you're gonna see Dante. You need some marketing stuff done, you're gonna see Mike. You're gonna hear from us, like directly. And it's not that we are hands on like that, it's just we know how to, we are multifaceted in our talent pool, in our talents, but we also have you know content writers and people who do strictly social media, so we bring those people on to handle those particular tasks. When the budget allows. When the budget, say that word. That word. <laughs> What's your budget? That's the best word ever in life, budget. But no, so it's, it's all, we have to explain ourselves when we put in our content. I shoot a weekly TV show. And this season, right now, we have quadruple our viewing audience. We went from 400 views to now over 3,000. And we're putting out content weekly. We're on four different podcast platforms, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, FeedBurner, and another one I can't think of right now. Basically, you're making Stitch it happen. I mean, yeah. And, 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 and that's, that's causing another pivot that we on to another service we're going to pivot into. I don't talk about it right now, but we're pitching it. But it's just those are the things you got to think about. But driving ambition, to go back to the root question, driving ambition, if you don't have those two tools, 
you might as well hang it up, go work on, at a government job, at hey, hey, doing, hey, hey, doing, hey, don't st- don't doing don't statistics, because you're not doing statistics or something like that, or be a pet groomer and clipping toenails of football Fido, whatever, whatever you like to do. I mean, I, like I said, if I ain't doing another, I'll be a cook, I'll be a chef, burn down the kitchen. <laughs> On that note, guys, I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for coming and for participating. We're going to check and see if we have any questions online or behind me. I haven't turned around for a really long time, so I'm not sure what's happening. Um, So does anyone have any questions? Oh, there's people to ask questions. Can I add something to what you said as a tool? Sure, go ahead. I want to add something to it. I want to add something to it. I want to add something as a tool. His name is Tool. I was going to say, make sure that you have boundaries with your clients. Um, Because especially like in this world, they will like, it's like sometimes I feel like they like don't care about hours or what you have going on because that's the life of a freelancer sometimes. No, I love when they message me on a Sunday and think I'm going to You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So set like office hours or boundaries or time limits where you're available, not available, and make that very clear to them and stick to them. Meaning like if they text you during that time, don't respond. Because if you start responding, they're going to be like, oh, well, look, she's making an exception for me. Yep. Just don't do it. So that's my advice because I fell down that rabbit hole myself. I've done, yeah. I, I, I used to do that back in the day. Now I'm a, I mean, I'll probably respond to a text message or if I happen to see someone at an event and they, I'll be like, oh yes, but we'll talk about it on Monday or, you know, right in the case maybe. That's what I was going to say. Um, set but, the boundaries. Like if you're out, don't let them try and like get worse. Especially now if I'm like a couple yeah. of drinks in. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> and remember your value. Like if, if somebody feels like, oh, you're not available enough to me, then that's their problem. Like, you know what I mean? Because there's other people that respect your boundaries and want to see them value. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Yeah, so I have one. Like, I think that's this is a great forum, and you guys shared a lot of good stuff. I like hearing everything. But um, the thing that seemed like was a consensus was a contract, hands down, right? Yeah. But how do you guys deal with putting the business before the romance of the work? Oh, I have no problem. Yeah. So you guys are just like you want to check the way my FPL is set up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but it's for real. People get scared as soon as no. you know. You, you, you have to. You have to get one. You have to get up the fuck over that fear quick. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to understand. Uh, no, 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 not not for me. You know, like for no the perspective. Yeah. I mean, they. That's what I'm. You're gonna you're gonna get that client that's gonna have that sticker shock. They wasn't expecting you to have a couple zeros after that number. And it was before the death. Um, they wasn't expecting that. And then, though, again, those clients might not be for you. And again, how she said, she said a word that I hate using is freelancer. Wow. Like, so you have to dictate what you're going to be. Are you a freelancer or are you an agency? Mm-hmm. And your rates That's good. and your rates are reflective, did, of, reflective of that. So you're a freelancer. <laughs> yes, you're going to be cheaper than the agency. Agency, I have a line item that says creative and administrative fees mm-hmm. on every damn invoice because every email I got to open up from you, every phone call I got to take, mm-hmm. or my assistant take, whatever, they got to get paid. That's right. Yeah. No good time. But don't make yourself an agency if you're not now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't make yeah, yeah, don't don't it. Well, I love the word that you used, romance. And don't put the romance in the work, put the romance in the discussion that you have. Because anybody who wants to, if they launch in a business or if they want to re- refresh a business they already have, they're typically pretty passionate about whatever they're talking about. And you should have such a clear conversation with them that by the time it comes time to present a contract, you're just reiterating what they already talked right, about. Right, right. Yeah. So you just say, here is a summary of what we discussed, yeah. and, and that should go forward from that. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You don't want to do business with people who don't want to be run from your contract, yeah. Yeah. honestly. Yeah. That's it's true, kind that's of like true. a red flag to me. Like, if you're running from the contract, right? mm-hmm. your checks might bounce. <laughs> 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 that's that's true. True. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even yeah. take checks anymore, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do that with Cosplay. ACH is real free. Does anyone else want to take questions? Yeah, there's one thing that never felt like it. I'm trying to like people. I know that's coming through. There's no way. So, I'm curious as to 
I, I kind of walked in late, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this, this uh, question will make sense. But as far as like your um, business structure for you guys, um, has anyone tried different business structures that may work better or not so well in this industry as opposed to whether it be an LLC or a corporation or um, along those kind of lines? Yeah, so I, I, I guess I'm LLC. LLC. I'm LLC. So, again, we drop a little extra deeper on that one too. So, you can file as an LLC. So, this is when you have a good bookkeeper and accountant when you're to that level. I have a great one. Jennifer is my, is my dog. Mm -hmm. So, what you can do as an LLC, you can file your corporate tax so, work. And I'm hearing myself. You can file your corporate tax work as an S Corp depending right. on your tax liability and how much revenues you're bringing in. So you don't have to fully go S Corp, but you can file at you can file your tax liabilities as an S Corp. So again, finding a good team member, a good bookkeeper, a good somebody to help you with those kind of things and explain it to you and take the time to seems like, hey, here's an operative link from Google saying, hey, this is the difference between filing as a C Corp and an S Corp, but you're still an LLC. Um, and, and, and those things help you grow as a business. It, it reduces your tax liability. So we own pay, so we have a payroll system. So we send money to the federal government every three months yeah. every quarter and it's a nice little chunk of change so that reduces our tax liability which is owed to the government and then it helps us out because we also paying taxes out of our paychecks to medicaid fica and all that other, other bs but just find you find your find you someone that's willing to assist with you you may have a bottle service with them so they can help you out and you help them out but then you know It'll, it'll come into a, a revolving relationship. I did my accountant's website, boom, she hooked me up on some back stuff I needed there. That happened to me last year, actually. Hey, it worked out because the website was simple. I did it in like a day. <laughs> boom, knocked it out. So, so um, another question I have from one of our people online is, what's a disruption in the industry you think graphic artists aren't taking seriously? AR or VR, for example. That's not a, that's not, but that's not, that's not the graphic design industry. First of it's all. It's not necessarily graphic design, but it is graphic arts. I mean, it is, it is visual. I mean, AR and VR is more on the, the, the video production side more than any graphic design side. If you really want to be truly honest about it. But is it a great disruption? Yes. But the, unfortunately right now, the cost of the equipment is what's is scaring people away. And the cost of produ producing that particular AR or VR piece is what you're calling I mean, look how long it took magic League. they just not released their their headset after four 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 or five plus years and raising almost a half a billion dollars you look at those numbers they just released it and they bought the, they have a partnership with at t right now so luckily there is going to cause them to have more output because people who want at t have an opportunity to get it. So, I guess, for like, from the questions perspective, like right now, like I'm focusing a lot on like um, 3D graphics and animation only because I feel like that's a skill set that I need to build a little bit more on, and I feel like it will definitely um, put me in a situation where I can reposition or I guess pivot to some degree um, as technology continues to evolve because everybody and their mother is a Photoshop technician, and so <laughs> the the value. That, that service is delivering sometimes gets watered down um, when people confuse their cousin who makes their logo with like my 10 years of experience. Um, Correct. Yeah. So, I don't know, that was my response there. Does anyone else have any? Yeah, I mean, that, if you notice, most of us, even if we started as graphic designers or maybe came to graphic mm -hmm. design a little bit later, We've all paired something else to that that essential Photoshop training or that essential Illustrator training. Like I myself, I know I can't draw. I can draw a stick man, right? But um, I still was able to use my graphic design background to pivot into web design specifically. If you're someone who can draw, then you can go full force at, at illustration. You're not really subject to 
disruption because AI is never going to really, it's going to take a long time mm -hmm. before it catches up Definitely with what you're doing. However, with a Photoshop template, there's all sorts of, you know, Canva, you can, on your, even on your iPhone, there's some Canva. really, yeah, there's some, but for most people, do you <laughs> edit in Canva? You, <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, that's, yeah, for a lot of people. I had a client like straight with yeah, me in sure. my eye and asked me that. I'm yeah. like, are you serious? <laughs> right. Sure. For a lot of people, um, that's becoming good enough. So it's, it's important to pair your graphic design skill with, something else that it isn't so vulnerable for disruption. But that's good because it's pushing us as right. artists to get better and to explore new things. So right. Pushing. Right, apparently Campbell's <laughs> pushing us. <laughs> okay, well, again, I'm going to say another thank you so much for coming, guys. Right now, I'm going to invite Larissa, the owner of Design Moves, to kind of talk to us a little bit about design moves and kind of just say thank you for hosting okay. us. Right. Turn up. Right. Hey. 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 So I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out and we're honored to be a part of the Southern or South Florida region as part of this movement. Design moves, the name of it is by design creating positive movements. So to be able to take part of this and parallel our vision with your vision is awesome. So, and we are we're a full service marketing firm. We deal with enterprises and governments. 